Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is the thirteenth lecture of this number theory series. And in this lecture, we are going to see how we can calculate modulo inverse of a number. So, before you guys continue, just go and watch the previous lecture, lecture twelve for this number theory series. The reason is because in in that lecture, I have explained most of the things about uh, modulo inverse, what it is, and why we need it. In this lecture, we are go uh, directly going to see how we can calculate one this is not going to be a very long lecture because there is very uh, little thing that we would study in this lecture so uh, there are two ways two efficient ways to calculate modular inverse and uh, th that we are going to study the first one is using Fermat's little theorem and the another one is using the extended Euclidean algorithm the running time of both of the algorithm is roughly same so Fermat's in this lecture we are going to study the Fermat's little theorem or uh, to calculate modular inverse so the Fermat's little theorem says that if uh, for a prime number m and an integer a which is co prime with m so co prime means the GCD of m and a is one that is they don't share any prime divisor so if m is a prime number and for any integer a which is co prime to m Fermat's uh, little theorem says that a raised to power m minus 1 is congruent to 1 under modulo m so this is Fermat's little theorem so what uh, there is a question for you guys what would happen if I divide the left side by a of course the result would be a raised to power m minus 2 now since this is a congruency so we can divide both left and the right side by a if I divide both the left and the right side by a what would happen is that the left side would convert into a raised to power m minus 1 while the right side would be a by 1 but uh, since we are working under modulo m so under some modulo division by an integer is same as multiplication by its inverse as I have already explained in the previous video so a uh, so 1 by a would convert into 1 into a inverse so the equation would look something like this if you divide both the left and the right side by a the result would be a raised to power m minus 1 is congruent to uh, a inverse under modulo m so what this says is that to, cal to calculate a inverse all you have to do is calculate a raised to power m minus 2 modulo m that is your modulo inverse so for a number a if you want to find modulo inverse of that number under modulo m which is a prime number all you have to do is calculate a raised to power m minus 2 that would be your a inverse this is what this equation tells us so the property of a inverse is that when you multiply a with a inverse and take modulo the result is going to be 1 as I have already explained in the previous video all of the properties of modular inverse and why we need them so if we take some of the examples so let's say t test cases a b and m so we are taking a and m so basically we are, for each test cases we are taking a and m uh, so we would calculate a uh, a inverse under modulo m so see out a inverse is equals to calculate a raised to power m minus 2 so a inverse is equals to a raised to power m minus 2 now we need to calculate the power function so in power in a raised to power n so if you remember from our previous lectures uh, about the fast exponentiation or binary exponentiation how we calculate the result so while n is not equal to 0 if n is odd then a is equals to a into a 
modulo m oh yeah we also need to pass m to calculate modulo under m so and if n is odd then a would be sorry if n is odd then result updates the result is equals to result into a else l divide equals 2 and a is equals to a into a modulo m finally return result and we also so what we are doing okay let's just print this let's see oh just a second now they should work so remember uh, suppose these are the number of test cases so we need to uh, calculate modulo inverse of 4 under 7 remember this number m must be a prime number and a and b their gct must be equal to 1 or they must be co prime so the uh, modulo inverse of 4 is 2 uh, and to confirm it you can simply multiply 4 and 2 the result is 8 and 8 modulo 7 is 1 which is the one of the properties of modulo inverse that a into a inverse modulo m is equals to 1 so let's calculate modulo inverse of 3 under 11 so it is 4 as you can see 4 3 is a 12 12 modulo uh, 11 is 1 now for modulo inverse of 8 under 11 it is 7 eight sevens are 56 and 56 modulo 11 is 1 so this is how you calculate modulo inverse using fermat's little theorem so the condition of fermat's little theorem is only uh, that m should be a prime and a and m must be co prime to calculate modulo inverse of a all you have to do is calculate m raised uh, a raised to power m minus 2 modulo m that would be your modulo inverse so this was all for this lecture since uh, the time complexity would be log n because log of m because m is the power you have to calculate a raised to power m and we know uh, a raised to power m can be calculated using binary exponentiation in log m time so uh, the complexity would be log m so in log m time you can calculate the uh, modulo in inverse of a number so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding thank you